Today we're going to learn about permutations and combinations. We're going to talk about the fundamental counting principle. What is a permutation? What is a combination? And how to use them. So the fundamental counting principle says that if something can happen in m ways and is followed by an event n ways, then the total ways they can occur you get by multiplying. So this person has three pants and three sh two shirts, so they would have six possible outfits. So here is the basic Chipotle menu. And how many different ways can you pick a meal if you can only pick one from each category? So in our basics, you've got the burrito, the bowl, the crispy and soft tacos, and the salad, so there's five things there. And then they ask you to pick your beans and your rice. So I've got five there. Okay. And your meats, we have five different meats. And then we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine toppings. So just picking one from each area, we can have 1,125 different combinations or different meals that we can have from Chipotle. Now just think of what that number would be if we could choose more than one in each. All right, so now in order to use permutations and combinations, we're going to use the factorial notation. And the factorial symbol is an exclamation point. And basically, 4 factorial means we're going to multiply 4 times 3 times 2 times 1. So you're going to start with 4 and multiply by each number below it. So 7 factorial, 7 times 6 times 5 times 4 times 3 times 2 times 1. Okay. So for example, I've got this. 4 factorial is 4 times 3 times 2 times 1. And then times 8 factorial is 8 times 7 times 6 times 5 times 4 times 3 times 2 times 1. All right. Um, so if I multiply all that out, and there's actually a way you can do it on your calculator, there is a factorial button. find it. Okay, it's usually under the probability menu, so 5 factorial times 8 factorial is going to be 967,680. Now the problem with division looks like it's going to be a big one because it's 14 factorial over 8 factorial times 3 factorial. But here's the deal. I've got 14 times 13 times 12 times 11 times 10 times 9 times 8. And after 8, because I've got 8 in the bottom, 8 is 8 times 7 times 6, so that cancels out. So from 8 on down cancels out. So that leaves me with 14 times 12 times 11 times 10 times 9. And then I have 3 factorial, which is 3 times 2 times 1. Well, 3 goes into 9 3 times, and then 2 goes into 10 5 times. So I can just multiply that out, and I don't have anything left in the denominator. So I do 14 times 13 times 12 times 11 times 5 times 3. Oops. And that gives me... 360,360. Okay. So permutation is an arrangement of things in a particular order. Okay, what that means is how many different ways can runners place? Once I've placed someone's taken first place, they can't take second and third. Okay, so it's really important that at order matters. So how many different combinations of the three digits can you have locker combinations if none of them repeat. So again, if I place an eight, if I have my three digits and they're from zero to nine, if I put an eight for the first number, the eight can't be in the second. If I put a one in the second, the one can't be in the third. Okay, so that matters. So this is a formula for that finding a number of permutations. It's 
we say the number of things take an r at a time and it's n factorial over n minus r factorial so if you are say finding a permutations of five things taken three at a time when you put that into the formula it's five factorial over five minus three factorial or five factorial over two factorial well from two on down cancels so the easiest thing to actually do when you're doing because you're gonna have five times four times three times two times one the two times one is gonna cancel so if I want them taken three at a time I just always write three blanks and if there's five choices five times four times three so that would be 60. So that's a shorter way to do the permutations, and that shows why the formula works. All right, so I have 13 students in my geometry class this year, and if I want to rank them based on their GPAs, one through five, how many different ways could they be ranked? Well, this is five things. If I rank the first kid, there's 13 kids, then I've got 12 for second place, 11 less for third, 10 left for fourth and nine left for fifth. So I have 13 things taken five at a time. So there is a button on the calculator um, in the probability menu that will let you do that. And that gives me 154,440 different ways. Combinations are similar um, arrangements of no particular order. Um, so basically, if Mrs. Stevenson said, hey, I have a middle school conference, I want to send 10 teachers, she can pick, just pull out 10 teachers. It doesn't matter, they're not ranked, she can just pull them out, that's a combination. How many ways can I pick starters for my football team? I've got those 11 players, and I can just put them on the field. Okay, so that order doesn't matter. Now there is no shortcut to this formula, the n factorial over r factorial and n minus r factorial. So we say that there are n things taken r at a time. All right. So here is an example here. If I have 15 of my 18 geometry and algebra students attending a math con counts conference, how many different ways can I pick my students to go? So I have 18 students taken five at a time. So it's 18 factorial over five factorial and 18 minus five factorial. So it's 18 factorial over five factorial times 13 factorial. So with my 18, I've got 18, 17, 16, 15, 14, and 13. And we could write that as 13 factorial all the way down and then five times four times three times two times one times the 13 factorial. The 13 factorials cancel. And then we can look and we can pick. So I know three times five is 15, so that cancels. I know that four goes into 16 four at a time, so that cancels. And two goes into 18 nine times. So now I'm just going to be multiplying 9 times 17 times 4 times 14. So 9 times 17 times 4 times 14 is 8,568 ways. And again, there's the combination on the calculators. You would just type in 18, that combination, and then 5 at a time, and you would get that same answer. All right, so let's assume that I want just two of my five Algebra two trig kids to go and three of my 13 geometry kids. So to pick my two Algebra two trig kids, it would be five combinations, two at a time. To pick my 13 geometry or my five, three geometry, 
it would be 13 combinations taken three at a time. So using my calculator, five combinations taken two at a time is 10. 13 combinations taken three at a time is 286. And if I multiply that together, I get 2,860 different ways to go. So when you're given a word problem, when you're asked to find how many different options, you first need to decide if it's a permutation or a combination. So how many different teams of 11 players can be chosen from a soccer team of 20? So it doesn't matter. I'm not ranking them. I'm not placing them. So this is a combination. So I've got 20 players taken 11 at a time. Okay, again, that's that 20 factorial over 11 factorial times 20 minus 11 factorial. But I'm going to use my calculator and do 20 combinations taken 11 at a time. And that is 1, 167,960. Okay, so how many different ways can I arrange 10 books on a shelf? Again, it, here with this, if I place a book on the shelf, then I, can't, I have one less to place on the book. So if I put one on there first, then I've got nine more to put in second. So this is a permutation. So I'm going to take 10 books and 10 books on the shelf. Um, it's just going to be 10 things taken 10 at a time or 10 factorial. So that would be 3,628,800 different ways. Now, if I only wanted to put five of them on the shelf, then it would be 10 permutations or 10 things taken five at a time. And that would be a total different number. And that would be 30,240. Now, if I was just grabbing five books off a shelf and taking them someplace and with no particular order, then that would be a combination. All right, last example. Oh. All right. Well, I guess that's all I got for you today. So today I talked about permutations, combinations, and how and when to use them. So have a math-tastic day.